Let's start with the base class dog here in the basic polyproj namespace. Now what I did with the dog class is I created a public constructor which accepts a single string I'm calling color. You'll notice all I'm doing is I'm grabbing that color and storing that into a privately encapsulated string here defined within the dog class. Then I've also defined a method here called getColor which returns that color value back out. Now I've also included a public virtual method which returns a string called speak. Remember the virtual keyword means that I'm going to allow this particular method to be overridden in any derived or subclass. Now right now the speak method just returns bark bark, but the idea is if I have other types of dogs that may speak a little bit differently, they have the ability to override that implementation. Now I've created two overriding classes or, or subclasses. One called Poodle, and you'll notice here that Poodle derives from dog. I've also created a constructor for Poodle that captures that color and passes that right up to the base class. So it's calling the parent constructor. And then I've provided an override method for speak. Well, in the case of a Poodle, Poodles don't really bark, they more yap. So I've overridden the speak method for the Poodle class so that it returns yap yap instead of bark bark. If I go to the Bulldog class, we've once again provided an overriding implementation of the speak method. This one returns the value woof woof. So I have two different specific types of dogs, each of which will speak differently than the base class dog. Now that I've created the basic classes, let's take a look at how the polymorphism is actually implemented by using a collection. What I've done here is I've created a class called MakeDog, and we're just going to use the main method to provide this illustration. I start by creating an array of dogs. So my dog typed array, named dog array, will store a total of three dogs. I'm going to go through each element of the array and load different dogs into each element. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is going back and forth, loading poodles and bulldogs back and forth and back and forth. So um, what I'm going to be doing is storing black poodles into some elements of the array and brown bulldogs into other elements of the array. So the same dog array may contain, or will contain, both poodles and bulldogs. Then what I want to do is go through that array again. I'm going to loop through that array, uh, through every single element of, the, uh, of that array, and I'm going to make that dog speak. Now you'll notice that what I've done here is I've used the dog array element and called the getColor method. Remember that the getColor method is actually inherited from the base class dog, so that will return the color, either black or brown. Then I'm going to use the speak method. Now, although the speak method is defined in the base class dog, we're actually using overriding implementations found in both bulldog and poodle. So each of these different types of dogs are going to speak a little bit differently. What's interesting here, though, is that I'm basically looping through the entire array and using just a single line of code to output the results. So how does it know which implementation of speak to use? That will depend entirely on which type of subclass has been stored within that particular element of the array. Let's execute this and take a look at the result. If we look at the results, we see the first result is that our black dog, our poodle, says yap yap. Then the brown dog says woof woof, the black dog says yap yap, and so forth and so on. So we have different implementations of the speak method being called depending on what type of object, what type of dog was actually stored in that element of the array. Please note, however, that the data type of the array itself is simply type dog. So all of these objects are sharing the same basic type even though they do have a different implementation. Now you can see what I mean by referring to the fact that the array data type really becomes a point of commonality. Each of these different individual elements is a type of the common type that we define at the array level.